This video will discuss the UV vis spectra of aromatic molecules as we will calculate them using the particle in a ring quantum mechanical model system. Okay, so our task in this video is to calculate the wavelength of the lowest energy pi to pi star transition in benzene. So the benzene molecule, we've got six carbon atoms in a ring there where with three pi bonds. So we have six total pi electrons in a ring so according to our particle in a ring model system, which we can model the pi electrons in this molecule as, remember we have our uh, particles are free to move in a fixed circular orbit in a plane where we have a fixed uh, radius r and we have a fixed polar angle, fixed angle from the z-axis of 90 degrees, and we're free to move in a circle changing our angle variable phi. Our Hamiltonian was minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the particle times the radius of the ring squared times the second derivative with respect to the angle. And the energies of these levels were equal to Planck's constant squared times the quantum number n squared over 2mr squared. And n, the quantum number, could equal any integer, 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. So our energies were going to be singly degenerate in the ground state, 0 squared equals 0. And then every state above that was doubly degenerate because plus 1 and minus 1 squared are both 1. So in this case, our electron orbital, our molecular orbital diagram under this type of model system will look like this. n equals 0, singly degenerate. n equals plus or minus 1, doubly degenerate. n equals plus or minus 2, doubly degenerate as well. So using the Aufbau principle, we start at the lowest energy orbital, and we keep going up from there until we run out of electrons. So we have six electrons, so I'd say one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I run out. Since it's aromatic, it fills up perfectly the valence uh, n equals plus or minus one shell. So if I hit this system with a photon then, photon with some energy h nu, it's going to take my electron from the highest occupied molecular orbital and then bump that up to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So the energy of this photon, h nu, is equal to the difference in energy from having an electron in the plus or minus 1 level to the plus or minus 2 level. So delta E is going to equal the energy of the final state minus the energy of the initial state. And if I put all the electrons in just for good measure, I have two in the ground state in the final state, plus three at n equals plus or minus one, sorry, plus one at n equals plus or minus two, minus in my initial state, I had two electrons at n equals zero and four electrons at n equals plus or minus one. So delta E equals E2 minus E1, which is h bar squared over two mr squared, and then I've factored out the n squared here, n2 squared minus n1 squared. So that's 2 squared minus 1 squared. So the energy difference between these two states here, it's going to be 3 h squared over 8 pi squared m r squared, where I've substituted in the fact that h bar is h over 2 pi. So h bar squared over 2 is equal to h squared over 8 pi squared. And then the 3 comes from 2 squared minus 1 squared. All right, so delta E is also equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon we absorbed, which is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength of that photon. So the wavelength of the photon we absorb is going to equal Planck's constant times the speed of light in the appropriate, uh, in the appropriate distance units divided by the change in energy. So lambda, our wavelength, is going to equal hc times, and then I'm going to flip the numerator and denominator here to get 1 over delta e, hc times 8 pi squared m r squared over 3 h squared. So there's an h in the numerator here and an h squared in the denominator, canceling those, leaving an h left over in the denominator. So the wavelength of the photon that we're going to absorb in this system is going to equal 8 pi squared 
times the mass of the electron, because that's our particle, times the speed of light, times the radius of our benzene molecule, divided by 3 times Planck's constant. All right, so we know the mass of the electron, we know the speed of light, we know Planck's constant. What we haven't discussed yet is what is the radius of this molecule. So benzene in particular is a special case. If we look at it here, if we draw um, from carbon to carbon on opposite sides, carbons that are para to each other, we get these type of arrangements, and then if we include the carbon-carbon bonds as well, we'll notice that each of these uh, triangles that we have here are equilateral triangles. So the distance of the carbon-carbon bond length is equal to the distance from each carbon to the origin. And that's because we have six total angles here in the center, and we know they're all equal because this is a regular polygon. It's a perfect hexagon. So these central angles here are going to be 60 degrees, and we know that these uh, angles on the sides here are going to be equal. So 180 minus 60 divided by 2 gives us 60 degrees as well and equilateral triangles. So equilateral triangles means that all these lengths are equal as well. And the length of a carbon-carbon bond in benzene is typically around 1.38 angstroms or 1.38 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Okay, so if we finally substitute in all these values that we have, lambda equals 8 pi squared, 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, mass of the electron, times 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, is the speed of light in meters per second, times 1.38 times 10 to the minus 10 meters quantity squared, divided by 3 times 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds is Planck's constant. So once we get those all together, um, and then I convert to nanometers as well, where 1 nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters, 1 1 billionth of a meter, the wavelength we predict from the theory, just using the very simple particle in a ring model system for these types of systems, we get that the predicted wavelength of photon absorbed to go from the HOMO to a LUMO in this electron orbital diagram is 207 nanometers, which would put it in the UV range. So that's why these transitions are typically in the UV vis type of region. Um, that's typically the energy it takes in the to go to these types of pi to pi star transitions. The more conjugated and, and spread out these things get, the bigger that R will get and the wavelength will get bigger. But in this case, it has a ways to go before it starts creeping into the visible range and becoming a visible blue photon. If we look up in some reference materials what the actual lowest energy pi to pi star transition is in benzene, we'll find that it's actually 255 nanometers. So this is pretty remarkable that a very simple system that's just based off of constraining electrons in the lowest energy, uh, the lowest energy states in a fixed circular ring that gives us about a 20% error uh, or a remarkably good qualitatively accurate job of predicting what this pi to pi star transition is, which a lot involves a lot of intricate physical phenomena. So it's really nice that you can use these more simplified models to develop some insights for the factors here that are going to control what these, what these wavelengths of photon absorption are going to be in these types of model systems.